Hello there, Sharon Durbin Graves, Painting with Acrylics 101.com here in my studio today in Kentucky. Um, today we are going to talk about painting grasses. Um, I love this uh, format here that I use and I use it in a number of different paintings. As I look around my studio, I see it repeatedly. Uh, if this is something that you like, then you're going to want to watch this video. Okay, so I have a painting here, and it had a, a black background, um, but at any rate, um, I put in all these different grasses, and the reason that they work are the values, and we're going to look at that today. And here's another um, example. And so I've got lots of grasses going on back in here, different uh, values, different shades, leaves, um, all of those things give your painting depth and perspective. Okay, I have a, this is watercolor paper taped to a board, and I use this a lot during instruction and to practice. Uh, and that way I, um, I'm not wasting a canvas. Uh, I'm just learning something. And so that's why I use this. Okay, I have a cad yellow medium, hooker's green, ultramarine blue, dioxazin purple, um, lime green, and white on my palette. That's what we're going to use for the grasses because that's all we're painting is grasses and maybe some leaves. Okay, so I have a synthetic flat brush. There you go. I'm going to tap it off in the water, tap it off on the paper towel. It helps pick up the paint better if the brush has moisture in it, but you don't want it sopping wet. Um, so anyway, I'm going to pick up the green. Now this is going to involve a little bit of color theory. The furthest things away need to be cooler, not as much detail. So I've got some of the hooker's green and the ultramarine blue right here. I'm going to add a little bit, a touch of white because these are transparent paints and white, the titanium white makes them opaque. So here we go. Now I, I can go in one of two ways and we're going to do both. We're going to look at, we're just going to put on, on the point edge and we're just going to come up. Use your arm, okay? And then we're going to come over here and we're going to be on the flat edge and we're going to come up. We might not come up as high with the flat edge, okay? Don't worry that they're not, I sort of ran out of paint here. You could go back over it. Make sure you go from the bottom up and not from the top down. See, I like these little wiggles right there. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna add some more green to that to maybe give it a little lighter, a little bit more white maybe. I can also add some purple because purple and green really go together well. And so I'm just gonna put them in there. I'm on the point edge of my brush. I'm touching and I'm pulling up. And I'm just letting it come off. I'll do it real slow right here. Let me get some paint on there. Okay, so touch, pull, and just pull it away from the paper. If you, if you go up like this, Okay, and then just stop. You're gonna have that. Okay, you don't you don't want that. <laughs> you want it to flow right off the paper. So you let your arm pull away. Okay, so now we can come back in here with some of this down here at the bottom. And don't overthink it. <laughs> this is I'm just adding a little purple, gonna add a little more green. Oh, I like that dark color. How do you like that? I'm going to put some of that over here. It's not going to be the same all the way across. It needs to have the variation for it to have some depth to it. Okay, so now we're going to come back in here and I'm going to pick up some of this lime green and I'm going to work down here in the green I already have. Okay, so now I'm just going to put in some more different lengths different widths. They need to kind of cross each other, not kind of, 
they need to cross each other. There needs to be movement in them. You don't want them straight like this. <laughs> okay, that, that will not get you the look you're looking for. I'm gonna put some more paint together. I've just got the hookers green and the lime green. And I wanna get some tall ones up in there. They need that movement, okay? Okay, so at this point, you've got several different values going on. And you can now start changing. I can bring a little bit of this lighter in front of. I can have some short things going on down here. If they're down here going, they need to be... Um, like very thin. So now I'm gonna start pulling off some of this yellow over here on the very edge, incorporating some of the green that I was using. I'm gonna add a little white. Okay, so now, I'm just adding in some more values and some more grasses. So at this point, again, I'm just adding a little white to that. You can come down in here and throw in some lighter things. Maybe there's an area where, like right there where there's nothing. So I'm going to put some of that in there. There we go. Now. Another thing you can do is if you wanted to put some leaves, I'm using the same brush. I'm using my lightest value. I'm just going to come up in here. I'm touching, pushing, and lifting. And at this point, I usually do two or three of the same uh, kind. I'm trying to get them in the background now. But Sharon, I thought the lighter and warmer... Remember I said not always? <laughs> some of this, sometimes I put these really light ones off and it just looks like they're not quite there, but maybe. So each time it's just touch, kind of push and turn and then lift up. Okay, you lift it away from the paper. Boom. And you'll get that little point there. If you don't get that little point, then you'll, um, you need to practice lifting the brush away from the paper. Now I can come back here with my darker values and make like a stem, put a, a leaf there. Comes another stem, uh, same, same thing. And I could do it with a bigger brush. I could put some back in here little bitty things, just barely touching it. And at this point, I am just touching and kind of twisting a little bit. Okay, so you've got some a lot of depth going on there. Now, I'm taking a much bigger brush. This is a synthetic, this is actually a watercolor brush that a student of mine gave me as a gift. I'm gonna bring some of this green over here and I really like the green and the purple mixture. Now, <clears throat> I can pull some stems out here, put a gigantic leaf over here, not enough paint. I can go right over it again, put a gigantic leaf out there, um, maybe something here in the center. Here's what I don't like about this one. It's too stiff. There. Okay. I, I There we go. Okay, so you can you could do that 
in any number of ways. You could make it lighter. I, I don't know that I put the lighter ones down here at the bottom because the light wouldn't get down into there. And so they would probably be more out here on the edge. And I wouldn't put gigantic ones out there. Um, again, pushing, turning, and then lifting it up. Now I can also come back with that on that leaf or this leaf with this lighter color and come across here, push and then pick it back up. And now it looks like that leaf is kind of folding in on itself. Let's get a little lighter color here to help you see it a little better. I touched, I pushed, and I picked up. Now it's really, you can really see that it's fold it on itself. Same thing here. I touched, I pushed, and I'm picking up. I'm just trying to give the leaves a little bit of shape. You also will need a, a little different stem maybe in those. There. So there we have a lot of different ways there we have a lot of different ways that you can make something, have some depth to it, <clears throat> and then add flowers, uh, lots of different types of flowers to that. Um, it's very interesting uh, format. You could make the background blue uh, to where it would look like a sky. You could make the background black for some drama like I did in those other two paintings that I showed you. Um, so anyway, there's that's how you can achieve some depth and it comes through the different shapes but mostly the different values we started with the darkest in the back we came forward with lighter colors as things recede they're cooler and duller when they come forward they're warmer and have more detail okay so thank you i hope this was helpful to you have a great day and let's paint together again real soon. If you knew three things that would help you improve your art today, would you be interested? I thought so. I've created an ebook with three things that help me improve my art and that I know that will help you also. Uh, it just click the link in the description and it'll be on its way to you any minute. Did I mention that it's free? Have a great day. Let's paint together real soon.